So we'll get this because I definitely want, yeah. But um, Montrevious, right? Well, not just Montrevious. I also want to talk about Marcus Allen. Um, We know at the inside linebacker spot going into this game, they were down, right? No Bush, no Schobert. We said, man, when you talk about a lot of with Spillane, Marcus Allen, and uh, Ulysses Gilbert versus the Browns and them potentially running the ball could get really, really bad for us. And at times they did have success, but I thought as a whole that both of those guys, even though they had their moments of struggle, I thought that they made timely plays like Spillane for every time that he might have given up something in the past game, man, I thought that he was playing downhill in the run game. I mean, you start the game off with a big tackle, you know, tackle for loss type energy. <clears throat> As a whole, I thought that his energy, though, downhill, it set the tone. And then I, uh, I like what I saw from Marcus Allen, especially some of the stuff in the screen game, man, just having good eyes, stuff that he's learned and grown upon. Um, I think it was the, was it the Chiefs game? Yeah, I think it was the Chiefs game where I would see some of the stuff where he's he would get caught being too close up into the line of scrimmage. It was the Chiefs or the Vikings. I, I can't remember which one exactly. It might have been the Vikings. But with Mark Sun, we talked about like, man, just sometimes like pre-snap him getting himself in trouble off of his alignment. And, you know, it comes from just not being out there enough. Whereas I thought yesterday he did do a little bit, a, a lot better in some avenues with some of his tracking of the running backs and stuff like that. So with those two guys, definitely, I thought, man, when you're talking about a game like this, stakes still pretty high. And you weren't full, you know, you didn't have the full group. I thought that those guys still stepped up in some big ways. Bro, yeah. well, we talked about Cleveland not running the ball enough, mm -hmm. which they didn't. Yeah. At the same time, I do think we made some nice stops in the no, running we, game. We Outside of did. Chubb's one really big run, yeah. they didn't have that that much going. And I wanted to give some credit mm -hmm. to the front seven. And then you want to talk about the middle linebackers, because I think we did a good job of stalling them there. Yeah. Because they were doing weird formations, like five wide sets with Baker. I'm like, what are you mm -hmm. doing? At the same time, though, maybe with how we were playing on defense, if they would have stuck with the run, we might have been able to stop them because they don't have the weapons at receiver that really scare you. us yeah. like that. So maybe that's why they were yeah. acting all weird on offense. It was yeah, maybe more of a credit to us. People's Jones, Jarvis Landry, we said they're good players, but they're not guys that you're game planning behind. They're not guys that you feel like we can't match up with. And I thought – you could see the confidence that Akello, Joe, Cam, Sutton, whenever they would match up with these guys, it wasn't like versus the Chiefs where they were over here looking for help. It wasn't like the Vikings where you're like, hey, uh, this guy over here, Justin, help us. Is this God's plan? Please <laughs> S send extra help. You know what I mean? Like that wasn't the case. And I thought that because of that, that definitely helped out. I mean, the guys on defense were able to play a lot more aggressive. You could have that extra defender in the box a little bit more versus having to stay too high almost exclusively because of them having some elite tier receiver. So yeah, man, that, that definitely helped us out. Well, Baker had like 10 incompletions in a row or something too. Yeah, and dude, I mean, we said in the stadium too, like we know a handful of them were definitely drops, but then some of them like the placement, he had to be better with the ball placement as well. But just as a whole, I mean, when you have a good, but not great quarterback with good, not great receivers, that's how it goes. That's normal. That's why most teams don't, you know, just come out here and excel and blow teams out and can score 50 every game because not every team has a top five quarterback or top five receivers. A lot of teams are built like that where you got to play a different style of game. And for Cleveland, once again... I don't necessarily think that they always want to commit to that style of play. So, yeah. But today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. You know, the leaders in below the waistline grooming and the innovators, the creators of that lawnmower 4.0, which is phenomenal. I mean, when you talk about that below the waist care, you know, when you talk about keeping your lawn nice and neat, I always think. You know, just in real life, like when people go to your house and they look at your lawn, you want it to be nice and, and, and kept neat when you get company over, right? Because it's not the worst thing. Company comes over, they see your lawn and like, oh, what is this? Yeah, you don't want any dog crap in the yeah, yard either. Yeah, no dog crap, but definitely no bushes and no weeds, whatever you do, okay? But the lawnmower 4.0 will make sure that you are covered. They will make sure that the grass is low so all of your tree will show, okay? And you want that, okay? It looks better that way. That's what I've heard at least, okay? So with that being said... You can't just check them out. You got to use the promo code. And ladies and gentlemen, we know what the promo code is. It is MOATS. 
Get you 20% off of your purchase and free shipping worldwide at manscaped.com. So stop wasting time. Hit them up because your delicate twins and friends will thank you.